Hello and welcome to the Car Care Nut channel. Welcome back to another series that we're starting today. This series will follow the theme of the How to Maintain Your Toyota series, but this series will be the ultimate guide to your Toyota suspension and steering. By the way, this also applies to your Lexus and Sire models. So we're gonna follow the theme of the previous series, which I'm gonna give you my honest opinion without turns and sugarcoating things, nothing but the truth, whether it's good or bad. So this will be a multi-part series, just like before. Today, we're gonna to be talking about shocks, struts, coil springs, and everything related to those components. But before we get started, hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up if you like it, follow the channel on Facebook and Instagram so you wouldn't miss sneak peeks of future videos. And without further ado, let's dig right into this. So starting with shocks or struts, before we get started, let me clarify what the difference is. This is a shock, shock absorber also. This is a strut. So the basic difference here is the strut actually has a shock absorber inside. It's gonna be housed right here. Here's a cap to hold it in place. That's the basic design. The only difference is the strut has this spring seat so the coil spring sits right here that's the only difference between a strut and a shock a shock is only a shock absorber this has a seat for the spring it also has the the mounting point for the sway bar link and it connects directly to the knuckle this is a very common design this style design of struts is called McPherson struts. It's used in a lot of Toyotas. I mean, short of the trucks, almost every single Toyota will have McPherson strut, even the newer stuff. Usually in the front, some of them in the front and back, some of them will have front struts, rear shocks. Now, I can't even remember the last Toyota that has front shocks separate and the spring would be mounted somewhere else probably really old stuff, but we're mainly focused on newer stuff, not the newest, let's say 90s and above. So I'm gonna start by talking about struts first. Now the way the struts are assembled, you have a strut, there's usually a rubber insulator here. Then we got, of course, this is not the spring for this strut, but this is for demonstration. Then you got the spring that goes in here, then, if it's a front strut, the mount would have to turn. As you, as you turn your wheel, this will turn as well because it's connected to the knuckle at the bottom. So you're gonna have another mount here, which unfortunately I do not have for demonstration. You're gonna have a little bearing so it would turn. And then you're gonna have your strut mount which sits at the top and connects to the body of the car. The strut mount itself does not turn. That's a misconception always. This does not turn. What turns underneath is the bearing. Now there are some strut mounts that have the bearing built in and you'll have a little separate piece that turns at the bottom. But this, these three connection points, they are fixed to the body of the car. It just does not move. The only thing that moves is the whole strut with the spring with the help of this bearing right here. Now, let me start with the struts. Cause I hear People saying, well, they told me in a shop, oh, I need, you need to replace the struts. If you don't ask why, we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. You always need to ask, why do I need struts? Especially if you're in for an oil change, tire rotation, some coolant, some maintenance, all of a sudden, oh, you need struts. Why do I need struts? Do you have a problem with your car? You gotta ask yourself that question. Wait. Is my car driving perfectly fine, rides great on the highway, nice and stable, no issues, no noises, no problems. I can put seven of my friends on the car and it doesn't drop on the ground or start driving weird. So why am I replacing the struts again? Just because someone like me said so? Oh no, oh no, you gotta ask that question. So let me tell you 
why you actually do need to replace a strut. And it seems to be another theme in the automotive business. Oh, you need to replace your struts every five years or 50,000. Last time I checked, struts were not coolant. You don't need to replace them just because. Just because some mechanic says, oh, the last Chrysler and Dodge, that's about when they go bad. Uh, you bought a Toyota. Ladies and gentlemen, you do not replace a strut on a Toyota if it doesn't have a problem. Period. The end of that story. I don't care what they scare into you. I don't care what the mechanic says and their great grandma's blah blah's car had a problem. No, no, don't fall for that. If there's no problem with the strut, you are not replacing it. The end of that story. Now, let me get into a few things that would cause this strut to need replacement. The number one thing, and this is, remember, Toyota specific, Toyota Lexus Scion specific. I don't know about other brands. We don't drive those other brands for uh, good reasons. Now, the main thing is strut leaks. Even strut leaks, just because the mechanic says, oh, your strut is leaking, needs to be replaced. Don't just run and replace it. No, there is a criteria by Toyota that tells you how bad does the leak have to be for you to need the replacement of this strut. Do you see this strut? This is called the spring seat. This is by Toyota. This is not my words or recommendations. This is by Toyota standard. Leaks will typically, you'll see oil here. Only replace a strut when the leak is past the coil spring. And I'll tell you a little insider secret. If you get a tiny little drop here, that's borderline. I'm waiting for that oil that's inside the strut that leaked from here to be all the way, almost at the bottom. Because I guarantee you, before it reaches that bottom, you're going to have noise issues. You're going to all of a sudden hit a bump and you're going to hear that constant knocking noise because the shock absorber is no longer... I mean, this thing, you, I really have to put all my force to to push it down. I'm, I'm pushing with all my force here and I can barely push it down. Granted, this is a new one. They get a little less hard as you drive on them. But a bad one, this won't even stay up. This will, I can push it with one finger and just go down because there's absolutely no pressure. All the shock absorber does, just like it says, absorbs shocks. So when your car is going into bumps, it doesn't just transfer all that. This will absorb the impact and make the ride softer for you. The other reason you would replace a strut, if you live in the Rust Belt, welcome to Chicago, Illinois, where uh, we like to destroy our cars in the winter. Well, we don't like that, but the government does. Anyways, these things, they're exposed. Rocks, chip, every, everything is hitting them all the time. So this beautiful paint that you see always gets chipped. That's just the way it is. These tend to corrode pretty badly. And if this thing loses its integrity, I've seen them snap in half. Yes, even Toyotas. So looking at it, if it has a slight rusty look, that's not rust. But if now, if you're peeling layers off of it and it's ready to fall off and someone tells you, hey, that's kind of looking like pretty bad, then I would replace it. But otherwise, if it's not leaking past the coil spring mount, I'm not even looking at it. I'm not even about wasting my time. I'm going away. And if your mechanic insists, then you insist that you need a new one. You need a new mechanic. Sorry, it's just the truth. I've seen Toyotas go two, 300,000 miles on these struts. And I've seen Toyotas go 20,000 miles and they need four new struts. It's just the luck of the draw. They leak, replace them, move on. They don't leak, keep going. Don't waste your money. Now, let's talk briefly about replacement before moving on. This is an original strut. Yes, it's super expensive, but it's worth every penny. I mean, every penny, and I mean this. I have never had a single problem with noise issues, whatever, from an original strut. It's expensive and it's worth every penny. Now, I'm not gonna go out and say, oh, this is the only strut you should put on your car. They're ridiculously expensive. So when shopping for aftermarket, 
shop for that brand name. By the way, I'm looking right here. This says KYB. This is made by KYB. It comes in a Toyota box and everything, but it's made by KYB. Now, when you go, don't go run into the store and buy the cheapest KYB because it's the same. That's not how this works. KYB manufactures this truck for Toyota according to those specific standards. That doesn't mean you're gonna get the exact same standards when you go buy the KYB labeled strut. However, when it says KYB in the original, chances are when you buy a KYB strut, it's probably gonna be a good one or close to, maybe not gonna last as much, maybe not gonna have that beautiful finish or whatever, but I'm not, I'm not endorsing KYB here. There's Saks, there's Monroe's, there's a lot out of the brands. I'm not very friendly with Monroe because I've had horrible experiences with them, but that's just me. You might have good experience. The best thing about struts is they all come, some of them come with some pretty crazy warranties. Always look for warranties because I don't care if it's the worst strut in the world. If it has a lifetime warranty, you need to put it on the end of that story. So again, shop prices, read reviews when it comes to buying struts. Yes, the original is the best. And likely when you're replacing your original one, the car is 10, 15, 20 years old. So think about that. This strut lasted this long. You think the aftermarket one, the cost half is gonna last the same? Probably not. But again, if your car is 20 years old, how, how long do you plan to keep it here? because I'm pretty sure the rest of the car is falling apart at this point, so why are you putting best struts when you're only gonna keep it for two, three years? But that's up to you. So that's the struts. Let me go briefly about the shocks. The shocks are exactly the same, because remember, what's in here is basically this with a fancy dress. This is the same thing, you can push it down. Again, it's very hard. Same thing with leaks. If you got rear shocks, most Toyotas will have rear shocks. Some of them will have struts in the back, so this applies too. But if you have rear shocks, again, uh, you need to replace every, no. Is it leaking? And how much is it leaking? With shocks, according to Toyota standard, if the leak is not past the middle point of the exposed part, do you see how this is like the cap? This is the part that compresses. You see it? When this, the shock will sit in your car just like this, when the leak's not past half this, I'm not replacing it. That's as simple as that. Now, if your leak is all the way to the bottom, you really need to replace them, then you're usually gonna start making noise by that. But if you have oil at the bottom and you have no noise, no concerns, no problems, car rides good, you do the little bounce test and it doesn't keep bouncing up and down, uh, I see nothing, wipe it down, move on if that makes you feel better, but I wouldn't bother. Why are you replacing st original struts with some aftermarket whatever because someone decided they're leaking bad enough? If there's no concern, there's no need for fix. If it ain't broke, never fix it. Apply that to every car and you're gonna ha ha drive one of the best cars for the lowest maintenance and repair cost Ever. One thing I'm gonna mention about struts for DIY mechanics, because this is a mistake I see all the time. If you are a DIY mechanic, whenever you replace struts, I don't care if you're buying aftermarket, whatever the case may be, you always put a new nut. This nut sits right here in the mount. It threads onto the strut. You always put a new nut. You do not know how many times I get a car, some shop did shocks or struts. Sorry, this only applies to strut, by the way. I just said socks. Put new struts, did a beautiful job, but they were too lazy to run to the, to the dealership and get new nuts. And the reason I say you need new nuts, these are lock nuts. They has actually a Teflon ring inside. This is a one-time use nut. You take it off, put it on, you need a new one. Stand up, this is as simple as that. Or if you're really in a bind and you really need to do something, please put medium strength thread lock. Don't worry, some people will tell you, what are you saying? No, 
I'd rather be safe than sorry. I'd rather be cutting this strut off the next 10 years later when I'm replacing it than have you drive with one of these that gets loose. This is dangerous. Always replace this nut, no matter what. And I also recommend you get the original one. They're very cheap. Even if you're putting aftermarket struts, just get an original nut. It's very cheap. It's not really worth it. By the way, if you're buying an original strut, it does come with it. Moving on to my best friend over here. I say best friend because I probably replaced hundreds if not thousands of these and every single one, there's always that voice in my head, it's gonna pop and it's gonna smack you in the face. And until you, you gotta, after you're done with this video, go watch some videos of what happens when this pops. It's scary. Anyways, coil spring. Now, this could come assembled on the strut if you have actually a strut setup. When you have shocks, this will be standing between either some part of, of the frame and the body or some control arm in the body. Depends on the setup of the car. That's, I'm not gonna go into every single car, but this will give you a general idea. Now, one misconception about these is, what do they do? This controls your ride height. This is very important because I see people Oh, my car is sagging, let's put some struts or shocks. That's not gonna do anything. This is actually what your car is standing on. This only absorbs shocks. Your car is standing, the height of your car is determined by this spring. Now, the spring has a few reasons you need to replace it. If a mechanic comes to you again, hey, you need new springs. Why? There's only a few reasons that you need to replace a spring. Otherwise, you just reuse it if you're replacing struts, for example. Again, if you live in the rust belt, these tend to rust and crack or break. If that does happen, you're, you'll notice your car will lean on one side because this determines the height. The shorter it is, the shorter the car sits. The higher it is, the taller the car will sit. That's why when you get it lowering springs, that's why they're shorter and they lower the height of the car. Now, the first one, first reason you would replace one of these, if it's cracked, broken, super common with Toyotas in the Rust Belt, especially heavier cars, minivans, SUVs, uh, even some Camrys, Avalon is famous for that. Now, another reason you'd replace this, if you drive, and as of the filming of this video, this, I don't know how long this video will go, if you're driving a 1997 Camry, which is the best Camry ever made, my opinion, these are probably gone. We're in 2020 now, 23 year old car. The whole weight of the car has been sitting on these things for probably 23 years. They're sagged. You notice older cars, they dropped. Now, these, you get them aftermarket, we might have problems. And, and I'll tell you what you should watch for. Usually, you get a, a spring from a Camry and you get a spring from an Avalon. They're the same height. They look exactly the same. I mean, you can interchange them in a second. But here's the problem. There's something called spring compression rate. Avalon is a long car. It's designed to be a softer car, more relaxing, more touring style car. Camry, smaller, shorter wheelbase. It's more nimble and drives around. Different spring rate. How much force What's the rebound of this spring when it's coming up and down? They're very different. That's why there's different part numbers. Even though you can inter interchange them physically and make them fit and they'll work great, it's not the same. I've seen so many aftermarket companies, oh, uh, I, I have one spring for all these cars. It's the same thing. No, it's not. And we see this all the time. I got a stiff Camry or a super soft and crazy weird Avalon, driving Avalon. Because if you put Camry springs in an Avalon, we have problems. And if you put Avalon springs in a Camry, we have problems. And if you put four cylinder springs in a six cylinder Camry, we have problems and vice versa. I'm thinking you catch my drift here. Each spring is designed for each car. If the spring is not broken, if the car is not lowered itself or by its own, don't replace it. The end of that story, there's no reason. You're wasting your money at that point. Keep it simple. If you live outside the Rust Belt, you're likely never replace this for your 10, 15, 20 year old truck or car, so. 
sorry, I said truck. Keep it simple. That's don't waste your money on this stuff. Moving on to another little guy here. This is called a strut mount. And if you own any early Camrys or Avalons, I'm talking late 90s, you know they were notorious for these. Now, the strut mount actually has rubber inside of it and it kind of absorbs some of the final vibrations of this system because this spring makes a lot of vibration. Now, it also houses the bearing because remember, if you have a strut set up, the top turns, the inside turns, the top is fixed, but the whole strut turns. So there's also a bearing in here. Now the bearing comes separate. Be honest with you, this bearing, unless it makes noise, I'd never replace it. This is not a wheel bearing. All it's doing is moving a little bit here, a little bit there. It's not really, unless rust gets in, on, inside of this, which does happen sometimes, but not that common. Usually I don't replace these unless I take it apart and the whole thing comes apart and it just looks looks bad, then I'd recommend it. Otherwise, if it's original, keep it original. Mounts. A lot of problems with mounts lately. And so let me go into this a little bit. Mounts on Siennas, on 2011 and up Sienna, notorious to go bad. And, and the noise this will make when the rubber inside starts separating or the whole mount rots, and this is notorious on, on some cars, mainly the Siennas. Um, this will rot right here, and now this whole thing is just loose. Just, and eventually it'll break actually, and that's, that's a bad disaster. So I recommend you actually get original mounts, and here's why. I've seen so many aftermarket mounts, never fit on the strut right, and they make noise from day one. So why are we replacing it to begin with? These mounts are not very expensive. If you shop around, you can find them cheaper than just full retail prices. Shop around. Again, if you're gonna put aftermarket, don't buy the cheapest one. Don't, this is, let's say this is $85 for one. You go online, you find two for 20 bucks. Do you think that's a good idea? I, I wouldn't think that's a good idea. This is not oil. This is not an oil filter. This is not stuff that you're gonna be replacing every year, every two. This is the kind of stuff that you might replace once, twice in the life of the car over a 15, 20 year old period. So always think of that. What am I replacing and how often am I going to replace it? Is this a good investment for me to put expensive, good quality parts? Or, hey, I'm getting rid of this car in two years. Let's just put cheapest stuff available. I don't care about noises they make. They're safe. Let's move on. That's the whole idea of that. Now I almost left out this guy and this is a rubber insulator. This basically sits right here and most of the time when you're looking through the wheel well, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see this guy covering this. Now this over time it will tear and it'll make a giant mess. People will tell me, oh, I got to fix this. This doesn't look good. I'm sorry. You're going to spend all this labor just to replace a little rubber boot. Now, yes, the intention of this is to protect dirt and debris from getting in the strut and accelerating its failure. But if the insulator is torn and you're going to pay the labor to do all this, take the strut, take it apart, alignment and all the mess just to replace this guy to protect a strut that you just paid the labor to f take apart. That doesn't make sense. If this boot is torn, you're going to pretend it's not torn, please. So many people insist and insist. No, no, it's torn. I got it. No, please don't. If it's torn, the strut's going to fail. What if it fails in 10 years? How do you know that? Because I've seen this case too. 15, 20 year old car. These are gone, completely gone. And the struts are still fine. So I'm going to take it, my chances on this one. Never repl replace this just because it's torn and everything else is fine. Now, when the strut is bad and you're going to take it apart to replace the strut or you got a broken spring or a bad mount, then yeah, throw one of these. They're super cheap. Throw one of these on so you can protect your new investment. But we're not going to take all this just for this. That's, that doesn't make sense at all. 
Now I'm gonna talk about one last elephant in the room. Quick struts. I will be honest and I will admit I have a big problem with quick struts. I don't like them, but that's my personal opinion. Now I'm gonna tell you my professional opinion. A quick strut is a fully assembled strut, mount, spring, everything, the whole nine yard, beautiful. You just take your old one, put this one in, you'll be done in 15 minutes. That appeals a lot to DIY mechanics because they don't want to deal with compressing the spring and that needs more special tools and all that. So let me talk about quick struts from a professional view. Let's say you assemble the whole struts from Toyota, it's $700. And believe it or not, they do go that high sometimes, unfortunately, but I don't make the prices, that's Toyota. Let's say $700 per strut. Now you go online, Google quick quick strut for whatever, Camry, whatever, Avalon. Hey, this quick strut is $150. The whole thing, 700, 150. Usually the first impression, and I'm with you on this one, let's go with the how I'm fitty, how bad can it be? But hold your horses there, because why do you think, do you think Toyota's trying to rob you there? Mm -mm, they're not. Now, the problem with these quick struts is they're quick struts, quick on quality too, most of the times. I mean, you put the quick strut, the first thing you'll notice, your ride quality is completely different. Second thing you'll notice, they're noisy. Most people will say at this very moment, they're get upset and they will say, no, it's not noisy. Go put an original quick strut, $700 one, and you'll see the difference night and day. Most of the quick struts will have the one size fits all spring, like we talked about. So, look, they're good if you're on a budget, if your spring broke and the car is sitting on the ground, if your shock is so bad that every time you hit a bump, you feel like the whole suspension is just gonna fall on the ground and you're only keeping the car for two years. Ah, let's put the quick struts. It's noisy anyways, at least it'll be safe. But if you have, I see people, they have a, four or five year old Camry, one strut goes out, all of a sudden the sh some outside shop, oh, let's put all four quick struts, you'll never have a problem, they have lifetime warranty. Well, you just ruined the ride of that car forever. That's the bottom line. Replace the one strut. If you have a bad strut, don't go quick strut. If you're a DIY mechanic, get the right tool. It is a challenge, when you tell a mechanic I have compressed a coil spring before. You earned a lot of cred and respect. Yes, because it's scary. Be very careful when you do one, but I encourage you to learn how to do one because you can save so much money and the car will drive nicer. When you go buy a quality strut, it's cheaper than a quick strut. And if you replace only this bad part, it's better in the long run. Now, one thing I will say about quick struts, shop around don't buy the cheapest ones some of them are horrible i mean just flat horrible i've seen them break in half i've seen them leak after two days now there are some quality ones monroe makes good ones kyb makes good ones shopper it's all about shopping around people we've said this in the how to maintain your toyota it's all about shopping around you gotta shop around here um, another website i'll recommend that have like 15, 20 different strut and quick strut selection is rockauto.com. I don't endorse them. I buy a few things from them here and there, but they seem to have a pretty good selection and the prices seem to be okay. So folks, if your car is a nice 2015, 16, 14, 12, less than 10 year old Toyota, please don't consider the quick struts. Now, if your car is older, but it's in good shape and you plan to keep it that 10 more years, Invest in quality parts, do the repairs right. Don't do what's easy, do what's right. And remember, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. No Toyota strut will need replacement every five years or 50,000. No, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The end of the story of, of the struts and the shocks. So one more thing I wanted to talk about for the springs, if you would. 
Now, some of the really, really, really old stuff had a torsion spring in the front. Again, bulletproof. There is so little problems with torsion springs, Toyotas, that it's not even worth mentioning, to be honest. And the other one is leaf springs. Now, some of the trucks, they have, especially the pickups, they have leaf springs in the back, not your regular coil spring. Now, the leaf springs with Toyota, unless you live in the Rust Belt, you won't even know what a leaf spring is because they'll never go bad. Exception, we had a recall on some of the Tacomas, but again, they were recalled for a reason. And the updated part, have a nice day. You'll never hear about it again. The only thing that could really happen with the leaf spring is it develops cracks, usually from rust, overloading, stuff like that. Again, they're huge, they're expensive, but they rarely go out. I mean, you were, we don't, when the Tacoma recall came out, it was like a, a shock to Toyota mechanics. Like, wait a minute, there's a leaf spring in the back of trucks? We've never done that before because you just don't go bad. So again, if you have a leaf spring in your truck, mechanic tells you it needs new leaf springs. The first question is, why do I need new leaf springs? Just because I need to pay my mortgage on time, the mechanic telling you that is not a reason you need leaf springs. If your leaf spring have a crack or break or separation, or the truck is sagging down, you need new leaf springs. They're expensive, yes. Is it worth it? Probably, but that's up to you. Honestly, I cannot recommend, I cannot tell you aftermarket is good or not because I we rarely replace leaf springs. You're likely not gonna have a problem with leaf springs. So there is that for you. Now this will wrap today's video for the shocks and the struts and everything. I hope you learned something new. I hope this was informative for you. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Just consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Follow the channel on Instagram and Facebook for some sneak peeks and update. And we will see you guys on the following part of this series. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have a wonderful day.